Hi guys, my name is Dilara. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I show you life in Russia from the inside. In today's video we will be talking about Russian apartments. To start with, we need to get down to Russian history. You know, in every aspect of Russian people, of Russian people's life, you need to get down to the Russian history. There is no other way. There is no other way. So let's do it. Basically, in Russia we have five types of urban houses. First, we talk about houses built before the revolution of 1917. You can find lots of examples of this infrastructure in St. Petersburg or Moscow. Most houses were built like hotels where you can rent an apartment. Only wealthy people could afford living there. Later, after the revolution, all these huge apartments were divided into small rooms and were given to Soviet people at the time of global urbanization. We call it kommunalka, coming from the word commune, living together. By the way, I had a chance to live in this kind of house and it was horrible because my toilet was in another hallway. I had to go out of my apartment, cross all the mm, kommunalka space and meet all the people and only then I could find my toilet room. Would, <laughs> I wouldn't like to give it another try, never. Second type of typical Russian house is Stalinki. Yeah, it comes from the time of Stalin, when many buildings were built from the 1930s to 1950s. These apartments had thick and high walls, big rooms, these houses were built for privileged people like scientists, writers, singers, engineers and other intelligentsia. My husband's parents live in this kind of flat and it looks really sublime. Just for you to understand how big it is, a 3 meters high Christmas tree easily fits in their apartment. Just for nothing. It's really huge place. The third type of houses comes from Khrushchev's era. At this time we can see an urban boom. The government built lots of new panel houses. It meant that one panel would cover one room. So those houses were rather tiny, with a small kitchen, one or two rooms and a narrow hallway. Though it let millions of Soviet people live in the city. My family used to live in uh, Khrushchevka back in the days. It wasn't a really nice apartment, but it was a great start for a young family. The first type of houses was born on the edge of Soviet Union. It was a modernized version of Khrushchevka, however, it looked kind of clumsy. The house that I live in is the first type. It's way more convenient than Khrushchevka. It has wider rooms and a bigger kitchen. By the way, it's quite normal to buy property in Russia. We have many mortgage programs for young families, for IT specialists now, so it's, it's quite common. Uh, but many people in big cities like St. Petersburg, Moscow and many others, they usually rent an apartment because the price of uh, the property there is quite uh, high. But the rest of Russia, they prefer to have their own accommodation. Frankly speaking, I was renting apartments in Russia for five years and it was a terrifying experience <laughs> um, because you don't feel like home, you always feel like it's not yours and a house owner can come to your house at any time, any day and they can just tell you goodbye. I need this apartment, so pack your things up and leave. And um, it really doesn't make you feel happy. And uh, last year, a year ago, actually, we got a 30 years mortgage for this apartment. And I finally feel like home. Even though when you say 30 years mortgage, it sounds not so uh, inspiring. Well, anyway, it's better than living on your suitcases, always packed. By the way, if you want me to do a video about Russian mortgage, leave a comment down below so I could see that you're interested in it. Now, it's time to show you my apartment and why I pay 
<laughs> I will pay 30 years for this. So, come on, let's get started. We'll start our tour with a bedroom. Here you can see bed. We've been dreaming of having a big bed for a long time, as in the flats that we have rented before, there weren't any. There were sofas, some other things, and now we're happy, finally! From the bedroom window you can see a nice view of Khrushchevkas and some other Soviet buildings. Well, it's not so inspiring, but anyway, we live on a 10th floor, so the view is quite good. We have lots of light in our apartment, so let's go to the balcony. Our balcony is pretty large. It's not so big as we dreamed about, but anyway, it's a perfect place for storing and keeping some household things, shoes, clothes, and some other things that we don't need every day. So, it's like a garage, but in our house. The next room I'm talking about is the office. I work online, so I have my desk here, here's my husband's desk, and a bookshelf. It's This room is quite empty, but anyway, I think it's a cozy one. I always work online. I'm an English teacher, so I really need lots of English books on my shelf. Most important room is the kitchen. Our kitchen is quite... Well, it's not so big, but it's quite not small. You know, it's not the most beautiful part of my house, but I really enjoy it some drawers, a cupboard, everything is nice. It's okay for two people, it's just perfect. I have a bathroom. There, well, it's just a regular bathroom, it's not beautiful there. We have construction, so give me some credit. And a toilet room. Well, nothing special, just uh, my cat's toilet, our toilet, and a hallway. In this uh, little hallway, it's an entrance hallway, there is a mirror. Hi there. It's a huge mirror, by the way. By the way, we've been having construction works in this flat for half a year, and it took us lots of time, energy and money, of course. But now I really feel like home. I feel that it's the place where I belong, where I'm loved, and where I'm loving. So I hope you liked this video and you have found something interesting and new about Russian apartments, Russian property system. If you have, please leave a comment down below so I would see what have surprised you. And make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel.